gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to be back at Conservative Party Conference after so many years of pandemic and whatnot. I know that uh, Joseph Garcia, the Deputy Chief Minister, and I are really amongst friends here tonight. And I say that not just because we are accompanied by a close friend, James Cleverly. James has long been a friend, long before he was Minister for Europe. I say that because I know that all of you are good friends of The Rock, best friends of The Rock. And I don't, I don't just mean the members of Parliament who are members of the Gibraltar group in Parliament. I know that in that Conservative uh, group we have more support than in any other parties, but I know that in the Conservative and Unionist Party we have more support than anywhere else in the United Kingdom. I, I know that we're 2,500 miles away from Gibraltar, 2,589 miles away from Gibraltar, in fact, to be exact. But I could just as easily have started tonight by saying, my dear fellow Gibraltarians, to all of you. Yeah. And I know, I know that is the case because I know you all care deeply about the future of Gibraltar. You care as deeply as if you were Gibraltarians about Gibraltar remaining you know, entirely and enduringly British and exclusively British. And therefore, I know that all of you will be rooting for us as we go into this final stage of negotiating a new UK-EU treaty between uh, those two parties for our future relationship with the EU. Like every other Gibraltarian, you will want to see us have a safe and secure relationship with the EU. And I know that you also all agree that the future of Gibraltar can only be decided by the people of Gibraltar. Yeah. Thank you. I know that your commitment to our self-determination is unquestionable, and you know that our commitment to Britain is unshakable. Yeah. There you go. So I want to I want to thank uh, Liz Truss for her work and commitment uh, for Gibraltar when she was Foreign Secretary. Um, and I know that that commitment and readiness to help in the negotiations continues now that she is Prime Minister. She made that very clear to me when I saw her recently after she took the job. Um, and I want to thank the Conservative governments of Boris Johnson and Liz Truss for their support through COVID. Not just with giving us vaccines for the whole population, but also with a sovereign guarantee for our long-term pandemic debt. In particular, I would thank Jesse Norman for his support when he was Financial Secretary to the Treasurer, Treasury in helping us with that. And I know that now that he's Overseas Territories Minister, we'll also continue working together. Now, the biggest thanks I have to give to Liz Truss is for appointing the former Minister for Europe as the Foreign Secretary. <laughs> because, you see, So, apart from having been Minister for Europe, James has been a good friend, and he's now an old hand in these negotiations. Having worked with him for some time when he was Minister for Europe, I can tell you he's exactly the man for the moment, and given the stage that we're at. And I know that he'll have a great you know, right-hand man in Leo Doherty as well as Minister for Europe, who is doing his job with such gusto that he's not here tonight, he's somewhere in Europe. <laughs> but to be, to be truly... Uh, Team Gibraltar, you can't just feel it, you can't just be it, you have to wear the colours too. So I thought that having found the right size. <laughs> so, the Gibraltar Football Association shirt. In case it gets in case it gets controversial during the World Cup, you know, this is a team every Brit can get behind because we're not there. Oh, that's there outstanding. outstanding. I hope you wear it. <laughs> well, it'd be, it'd be absolutely lovely to see you wearing those colours in Gibraltar sometime soon. This year, this year, as many of you will know, we had to cancel our National Day celebrations on the 10th of September. The death of Her Late Majesty left us with nothing to celebrate and everything to mourn. You all, you all know that the British Crown has no more loyal subjects than the British people of Gibraltar. Yeah. Our Royal Gibraltar Regiment proudly guarded the Sovereign and the Royal Palaces back in March and April of this year. 
What better demonstration than that of our indisputably British sovereignty? Our people, our regiment, guarding our sovereign. We were therefore absolutely heartbroken when the death of our late majesty was announced. Because as many of you may already have heard me say, but I will never tire of repeating, we were her rock, but she was ours too. And both of those analogies extend far beyond the geological. So today, as I see you for the first time since the pandemic, and as we gather for the first time since we mourn Her Late Majesty, I want to end my address to you tonight reaffirming the entire, enduring, and exclusive loyalty and commitment of the people of Gibraltar and the government of Gibraltar to the British Crown. We all, I know, we all, We all, we all, I know, wish and pray that our beloved Queen Elizabeth shall rest in eternal peace. And I urge you all now to raise your glasses and toast, my dear friends, the King of Gibraltar, Charles III. Long live the King! Long live the King!